you've got something to say, say it to my face. Say it to my face. That was Vice President Kamala Harris's challenge to Donald Trump over the summer, and tonight, Former the former president will be able to do just that. For more, let's bring in our political panel, Stephanie Lai and Maeve Rustin. Stephanie is national politics reporter for Bloomberg, and Maeve is national political reporter for The Washington Post. Ladies, great to have you both with us here. I know you've both been out on the campaign trail covering all these candidates. Um, Maeve, I want to start with you. Uh, you also are in California. You've yeah. covered Kamala Harris for a long time. What's so striking to me is that she is the sitting vice president, but yet she's kind of running as an outsider. And we know that the Trump campaign is really hoping tonight to attach all of Biden's policies to her, make her the insider, make it seem like she is the incumbent president, essentially. Um, knowing what you know about her and having covered her, how is her campaign responding to that? You know, it's so fascinating, like, how they are trying to make her the candidate of change. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. she is, you know, she would be a very different kind of president. Uh, you know, the first woman, obviously, her the first uh, black woman president. Mm -hmm. But those are things that she doesn't want to talk about at all. So the campaign feels that, you know, that I think that there's that visual contrast that we'll mm -hmm. see on stage tonight that'll be really interesting for people. But she is going to have to really answer uh, the attacks that he's been making about, you know, why she didn't change things for people in a more rapid way as mm -hmm. vice president, whether it was lowering prices. Um, we saw that really tough video from Trump's campaign this morning mm -hmm. about that. And I think so how she threads the needle of not she, she's not going to try to distance herself too much from Biden, mm. but to argue that, you know, that that really it's it's been the Trump era for the last mm. 10 years, mm. um, you know, that he mm. never stopped running for president, mm. that he tried to overturn the election um, and that, you know, she would be a break from all of that. Mm. So it'll be really fascinating to see the way that she does that and whether it'll be successful, yeah. because for yeah. a lot of people, it may be pretty hard to swallow that argument. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's such an interesting point because, Stephanie, I mean, the past decade almost has been kind of defined by Donald Trump and politics. And, you know, it's fascinating to me that these two candidates have never met before because you think about Kamala Harris came in in 2016, was elected that same year. And as you know, her political career has in large part been shaped by kind of opposition to Donald Trump. And I'm curious from, you know, covering Trump as you have. You know, how, he's so well known. So many ideas about him seem to be baked in. I mean, how does he, you know, move the needle tonight, if at all? I think, if anything, the whole debate is really about whether or not Kamala Harris can move the needle. Mm -hmm. I think his senior advisors put it best uh, in a RNC press call today in saying that the stakes mm -hmm. are just so much higher for Harris because she has to essentially introduce herself to Americans. Mm -hmm. You know, we all do know her as vice president, but people don't necessarily know her political views as well. And so mm -hmm. this is really her moment to, you know, tell the American voters, this is what I want to see in the next four years. And mm -hmm. something that the Trump campaign has been narrowly focused on is telling voters that four years, her day one started three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as, as we talked about, it's almost mm -hmm. as if she has to answer for the last uh, administration. Yeah, and, and what's so uh, also interesting is that, you know, Kamala Harris has debated a lot in her career, also, of course, in 2020, and she did a vice presidential debate, but this is her first presidential debate in this kind of setting. And I can't help but think of all the money that's been spent in this race, and we've had both conventions, and yet it is a neck-and-neck neck race. I mean, especially Amazing. here in Pennsylvania, it's 50-50 in our poll. Yeah, and, you know, she is, it's interesting, because in those earlier uh, debates that I covered um, in California, when mm -hmm. she was, you know, running for AG, or even earlier in her career, she had a real confidence back then and a toughness in those debates, particularly in the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Mm -hmm. And then we saw in 2019 her really struggle with her ideological footing. She was mm -hmm. on that stage with Bernie Sanders. Yeah. She was not comfortable, um, you know, with that far liberal um, ideological positioning. Yeah. And 
I think tonight, you know, she's kind of unapologetically flip-flopped on a ton of yeah. positions that she took in yeah. in 2019. And it'll be interesting tonight um, to see her in that one-on-one -on -one setting and the way in which she explains, you know, where her values are. He's mm. going to clearly try to trip her up over and over again on mm. changing her position on fracking or mm. aspects of the immigration debate. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that she will try to, you know, show toughness, mm. but also really focus on introducing herself to voters, mm. um, as you were talking about, because she is the only one with a lot of room to grow here. Mm. And so, you know, a lot yeah. of people weren't watching the convention, the, the yeah. voters that matter. That matter, yeah. Um, and she has an opportunity tonight to, to do that reintroduction. So maybe yeah. less of the the punching that we're all mm -hmm. expecting mm -hmm. and more of her telling her story or trying to do so. Trying to, yeah. I mean, and when we talk about voters who matter, of course, we're talking all voters matter. We're yeah, talking course, about the, the, <laughs> the, you know, that small group of people who this group seems to be dwindling every cycle, yeah. those undecided or independent voters. Um, and Stephanie, you know, can the Trump campaign reach out to them, convince them um, or is this a matter of using these moments to really rally the base to prepare to, to battle with with Harris's face? It could really be both. As you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, Pennsylvania is almost 50 50. A lot yeah. of these swing seats are really close in a way that this race wasn't necessarily positioned to be mm -hmm. in, you know, just a couple months ago. Yeah. And so this is still a very crucial moment for Trump and his campaign. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if he can really focus on the Biden Harris uh, administration's record, mm -hmm. trying to set the record straight of, you know, what his administration accomplished, you know, that could mm -hmm. potentially sway a lot of independent voters. But of course, he has to stay on message, and that's something that his advisors are saying they expect him to do. But of course, this is you know former President Donald Trump that we're uh, mm -hmm. covering, so there are always moments of you know unexpected uh, quips or remarks to come out. There's also those like conservative voters out there who, you know, really were alienated by Trump, but mm. then drifted back because they, yeah. you know, really had issues with Biden's age, mm -hmm. um, whether he could deliver a message. And it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how she tries to position herself tonight mm -hmm. to talk to those people. I mean, obviously, the campaign this week has been hitting so hard. The endorsement she has from military generals or the Dick Cheney endorsement, mm -hmm. which I think you and I thought we would never see in our <laughs> lifetime, right? Still can't um, believe it, yeah. But, you know, the way in which she talks about that tonight as sort of an example of how um, she would bring the country to a different place mm -hmm. as she tries to make Trump seem like, you know, someone who's only out for himself. Yeah, and this could be the first and only <laughs> debate that we see between the two. Um, so we'll be watching for all that body language in the middle, in the beginning yeah. of the debate as well. Uh, Stephanie and me, thank you very much, thank both you. of you, for all your reporting, and we'll see you soon.